How's it going, Eliminators? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the first, second, and third generation starters that Kohler used on their SV710 to SV840 V-twin engines, and why, if you're replacing one, you absolutely want to go with the third generation starter. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I'm working on this Kohler SV710-3002 engine. And this engine's mounted on a Troy-built hydrostatic riding lawnmower here. And it came into the shop because it had an issue with the starter. Obviously, you guys can see it's missing the spring, but uh, there's a little bit more than just missing parts. There's actually three generations of starters, and I'm gonna quickly run you through all three generations. So on this SV710, the first generation starter, basically had a, a spring and a gear just like you see here but this little cap here was held on by this little clip now after speaking with Kohler the issue is that these starters generate so much torque that when they engage it hits so hard that they would literally blow these clips right off and it's very difficult at least here in Canada to find rebuild kits for these starters you guys can see there's the broken piece of the spring inside of there so this is the first generation starter. Obviously no good because it breaks. I went ahead and ordered a mega fire starter from Stens and I have the part number right here. So that's a 435-275 and it replaces the OEM Kohler 320810-S. Now this is what's known as a second generation starter. So you guys are gonna notice that uh, the gear now has a dust cap on the bottom. It also has a dust cap on the top. So the original one was missing it because again, that gear comes up and just completely blows everything off of the starter shaft. So I pulled this off to expose the second generation design. So what they did was they threaded this shaft. I'm just gonna take the nut off here to show you guys. So they put a washer and just a nut. So. I went ahead and replaced this starter, installed it, my customer has been using it, and then called me up and said, the starter just spins freely. I think I blew the gear on it again. So what I think happened is that the gear just went up high enough, loosened off that nut, which then allowed the gear to go up high enough to the point where it kind of stuck in between the teeth and the rubber here. It was uh, real high up on the shaft. And then what happened is when he turned the key, the shaft of the starter would spin, but the engine wouldn't crank over because the shaft wasn't spinning the gear. So instead, what I plan on doing is using a little bit of red thread locker on the starter shaft threads there. I'm going to tighten the nut down and I'm going to reinstall the dust cover and then I'll go ahead and turn the key over and see if we can get this engine to turn over. Then at least I'll be able to get this back to my customer because we just had about four days of straight rain and his grass is incredibly long. So at least he'll be able to start up his machine, cut his grass, then at least I'll be able to warranty this starter. Okay, so I have the nut tightened down onto the starter shaft with the red thread locker on there. Now you are supposed to let the red thread locker cure for 24 hours. However, I should be able to to turn the key and test it. And then I'll just go ahead and make sure that the nut is tight. So the parking brake is on. I'll go ahead and turn the engine over. Works as intended. So, like I said, I'll make sure that nut is tight on that starter shaft. With the red thread locker on there, the nut should not come off. All right, so we're back in the shop with the Kohler that needed the starter replacement. Today's Saturday and I just picked up the machine from my customer's house. He was able to get his grass cut. So the red thread locker on the nut held. Again, that's probably not a long-term fix, but it was good enough so that I could get it back to my customer. I got the third gen starter in. So I'm going to remove this one and I'm gonna line up all three on my workbench and we're gonna do a little comparison. All right guys, so this is hopefully going to be a definitive video that goes over pretty much everything you need to know about the first, second, and third gen starters for these Kohler SV710 to SV740 or SV810 to SV840 engines. One of the first things we're going to discuss is the overall length of the starters. So with the first gen and the second gen starter, they are both going to be nine inches long. The third gen starter is shorter. As you guys can see, it 
it has a different design on the bottom end and is overall a shorter starter. This is the spec sheet for all of the new upgrades on the third gen starter. Basically, there's uh, quite a bit of stuff. Obviously, the shorter motor, so they designed a completely new motor that also draws less current. So this new third gen starter replaces the old brush assembly that was used on those previous generation starters. You can see here that there is a new inertia drive system that has been developed and it has many advantages over the previous design. So we're gonna go through those. Kohler found that the first and second gen starters were drawing too much current. And it was interesting because when my customer came in with his ride lawnmower to the shop here the original battery that he had in it it had I think like one or two volts in it and when I hooked it up to my battery charger the cables on my battery charger got so hot that the rubber actually started to melt so I quickly disconnected it and we told my customer that I didn't feel safe trying to charge his battery so that's why he went out and purchased a brand new battery uh, I believe this one here is a 430 cranking amp which gives him 350 cold cranking amps. So this battery here will turn over pretty much just about any V-twin big engine, and he should not have any issues with the combination of this battery and the new third gen starter that draws less current. Now, because the third gen starter has a new motor, it gives you better torque and better speed. So the higher speed translates to more frequent pinion and ring gear meshing, which essentially means that because that gear is forced up and is spinning so fast, it's not going to be jumping back down and it's going to stay engaged with the flywheel for a longer time. You guys can read here that cranking speed is now 80 RPM faster than the previous second gen motor. So overall, it gives you better performance better rollover engine speed and no hot restart stalling. So this is interesting. On the first and second gen starters, they must have had an issue where if the engine got hot, obviously the starter got hot because the starters bolted to the engine, they had a hot restart stalling issue where you'd go to crank over your engine and the starter would turn and then it would basically just lock itself up. And if you guys are frequent viewers on my channel, you'll remember me talking about an auto compression release on a lot of these engines that fail and it makes turning over an engine very difficult. Well, you may actually think that you have an ACR failure when in fact you just had this hot restart stalling issue on the first or second gen starter. And then lastly, they have patented a new RDD system, which is a rubber disc drive. And this encapsulates the rubber and shields the friction surface from contaminants, also solving the grease oil contamination slip issue. So I guess before, if there was a little bit of engine oil that got into the starter, they had a slipping issue. And if you guys will remember, the dipstick is right next to the starter there so they must have had an issue with that that has been solved on the third gen second thing that i'm going to be pointing out here is going to be the gear on the first gen you guys can see that this one does not have a rubber boot around the bottom of the gear like the second gen one does so I don't know if the first gen here had a rubber boot and you know, because it's so old, it's kind of uh, you know worn away or fell off. I don't know. You guys can see that on this one, it has some cutouts on the bottom of the gear. So maybe you can look for that. Second gen starter here obviously has this big rubber dust cap around the bottom of the gear. And that's to keep dirt and debris from getting up under the starter gear and into the shaft. Whereas coming over to the third gen, you guys are going to notice right away that they have this big metal piece on the bottom of the gear. And speaking of the gear, the first gen and the second gen starters both have 10 teeth on the starter gears, while the third gen design only has nine teeth. Now moving on to the pinion, which is the gear on the starter, we discussed them decreasing the teeth from 10 down to nine teeth on the third gen starter. Now what this does is it gives you a better ratio. So whenever you're talking about gears or pulleys, whenever you have a smaller gear turning a much larger gear, you're getting what's known as torque multiplication. So by decreasing the tooth size from 10 down to nine, they're actually increasing the amount of torque that this starter can put out. And while on the topic of the pinion gear, you guys can also see that they have opted for a cold forged pinion gear which is going to increase the strength of it you're not going to get chipping or wearing on that gear 
Another thing you guys are gonna notice is coming down to the first gen, you're gonna see that this one has a little clip on the top, similar to the old uh, Briggs and & Stratton and Tecumseh starters that you guys have seen me rebuild in the past. The problem was these gears would hit up so hard that these clips here would completely open up and then your whole gear was allowed to slide right off the top of the shaft. So obviously it wasn't built strong enough. So Kohler figured out that they had to do a design update. So they came to the second generation starter here where instead of using the clip on the top of the shaft, instead what they did is they threaded the top of the shaft, they put a washer and then they put a nut right there. However, the engineers over at Kohler didn't do too much thinking with this design. You guys saw the issue that I had, the nut kept coming loose on this brand new Megafire starter, and this is a second generation. So here is the Megafire starter number, it's a Stenz 435-275. And you guys are gonna notice that it says it replaces the Kohler 320810S, as I've been told, refers to the second gen starter. And I had no idea of that when I first started out. So keep that in mind because this Megafire or even the Kohler OEM starter that has the second generation design has an inherent design flaw. So what happens with these starters is when you engage them, the gear rotates counterclockwise and is lifted up. However, the engineers threaded this shaft with a right hand thread. So if you guys haven't figured it out by now, every time you engage your starter, this gear comes in contact with this washer and it bumps the washer counterclockwise ever so slightly. Now what that does is it slightly loosens off the nut on this shaft every time you engage your starter. So as you guys saw in this video, what I did was I put some red thread locker on that nut and I put it back together and then I let it cure for 24 hours just to get this riding lawnmower back to my customer so that he could go ahead and cut his grass. As you guys can see, the nut is still attached to the top of that shaft. So it worked for him to go ahead and get his grass cut but like I said, that's not a permanent fix. So what did Kohler do to fix that design? Well, coming over to the third gen, you guys are gonna notice that it looks very similar. We still have the washer and the nut attached to the top of the shaft. However, on the third generation design, they use a laser to superheat the nut and the shaft and it fuses it together. So the third gen starter here features a welded nut. Now, like I had mentioned to my customer while discussing possible options, I probably could have welded the nut to the top of that Megafire starter. However, that would have been modifying it and it would have voided the warranty. So just a shout out to Stens to, uh, you know, kind of tell you guys how good of a company they are. I submitted a warranty claim for this starter because I told them it was brand new and it only had about four uses. And I, you know, discovered this inherent design flaw that it had. And within half an hour, a representative from Stens called me back and completely took care of the warranty. So I was fully refunded for this second gen brand new Megafire starter that still works, but again, has that design flaw. They also warrantied me for a little bit of labor. So when you're working on equipment and you have to take off a defective part, obviously you're losing time. So having Stens cover a little bit of my labor, that's totally awesome. And the way that they took care of it in a timely matter, big shout out goes to Stens. Just to be clear, I've been with them for over eight years now, I believe, and this is the second part that I've ever had to warranty. The first was a defective carburetor, and the second one is a starter that really isn't defective, but again, has that design flaw that is now fixed with the third generation. Now, if you guys think that I was done there showing you guys the differences in between these three starters, there's actually one more thing that I wanna show you, and that is going to be the thickness of the shaft and the strength of that shaft that the starter gear rides on there. Basically, the issue that Kohler had when they upgraded from the first gen to the second gen was that the gear was still coming up and hitting the nut pretty hard. And what would happen is if that nut didn't thread off to allow that gear to go past it, it was hitting it so hard that they were actually finding some of the shafts on these starters had a crack in them. And then obviously you keep using it, that crack is going to spread until 
some of the shafts on these starters broke off completely but essentially they knew that now they had you know another design flaw that the shaft wasn't strong enough so on the second gen mega fire starter here i've lifted up the plate that sits underneath the gear that's what lifts it up and you guys can see that the shaft thickness has not changed from the first gen to the second gen here however when we come over to the third gen starter here you guys can see a thicker shaft that the gear rides on so that's going to be much stronger and is going to be less prone to cracking and therefore less likely to fail when we were talking about shaft size you guys can see stronger shaft so the first and second gen starters have a 12.5 millimeter shaft and the third gen starter has a much stronger 17 millimeter shaft so they've upgraded it by increasing the shaft diameter four and a half millimeters obviously because it's a stronger shaft it's going to be less susceptible to bending or those fractures we were talking about and i did purchase this third gen starter direct from kohler as you guys can see the box there the part number is going to be a 320910-S. Now, you guys are gonna to wanna to keep that in mind because a lot of starters that are gonna be aftermarket, that are gonna be Gen 2, are going to be listed as a replacement for this number. So if you're searching the web or your parts portal and you type in a 320910-S, you could end up getting one of these. And basically, I had to go through and kind of talk with my distributors to find out who had which starter. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update here. I logged into Stens and the Stens 055-681. This is an OEM Kohler starter. However, even though it says that it is the 320980910-S, which is supposed to be the third generation, uh, this starter, I had my Stens rep go out into the warehouse and check. He pulled the dust caps off of three of them, and they are the second generation starters with just the washer and the nut, and the nut is not welded to the starter shaft. They currently have 21 of these starters in stock. So basically what he said is that they most likely have the older style second generation starters. And then once they sell those 21 that are in stock, then they will get the latest third generation ones. But basically I had to get them to verify this so that I didn't go ahead and order the 055-681 starter, which again is the OEM Kohler one, but it turns out to be the second generation. And just to give you guys a further update on that, I'm currently on Amazon Canada looking at the Stens 055-681 starter. And you guys can see here, we see the rubber cap on the 10 tooth gear. So we could assume that that 055-681 starter is the second gen. However, we move down to the second photo here and check this out. It is the shorter starter with the nine tooth gear. And what I didn't notice at the time is that Stens is also using these same two photos that this Amazon reseller is using. So you guys are going to want to be aware of that. And like I said, just speak with your distributor so that you can get a verification of which starter you're ordering before you place that order. Now I'm going to put a picture up on screen because I want to point a couple things out here. The starter is listed as being nine inches long, like the Gen 2. However, it's listed as having nine teeth, like the Gen 3. So there may even be a Gen 2 and a half, which is kind of a hybrid between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3, where they went ahead and put a nine tooth gear on it. Now, I'm not too sure about that, which is why I highly recommend you guys stick with the Gen 3. I was told by my representative at Kohler that this starter here would not fail. So because I was warranted this starter and I was also warranted a little bit of labor, I went ahead and ordered the Gen 3 from Kohler Direct. It was a little bit more money than the Megafire or the OEM Kohler starter that Stens sold. However, I told my customer that I would take care of the difference at no cost to him. I also dropped off his riding mower picked it up this morning and we'll bring it back to him later this afternoon at no cost again that's just what i do to take care of my customers you know kind of have to compensate him for the hassle that he's had to deal with so even though it was a little unfortunate that i had to go through this in the end it was a big learning experience for me learning about you know these first second and third gen starters and it will also be a learning experience for stens because i will send out some photos that will help 
the representatives at Stens identify the second and third gen starters so that they can properly fill out their product listings and hopefully prevent this from happening to someone else in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and get this third gen starter installed and when I install starter bolts I do like to use a small dab of blue thread locker just to prevent starter bolts from vibrating out. So the third gen starter is installed but you guys can see that I've lifted up the gear. Don't worry it's not stuck. I'm just going to be using a little bit of liquid wrench dry lube on the shaft and that will just lubricate those grooves in there to allow the starter gear to go up and down smoothly on that shaft. Shouldn't have any issues. So with the parking brake on and the engine throttled down, I'll go ahead and turn the key over and engage this new starter. Well, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did want to get this information out there to the general public for people who are mechanics like myself or for consumers because they're going to be going on Amazon, eBay, places online that are going to be selling an aftermarket starter that could be the second generation that's advertised as being the latest and greatest, which obviously you guys can see that's not the case. So hopefully this video saves you guys some hassle and also saves your customers some hassle. With that being said, if you guys did enjoy the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week. Check channel up for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.